Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and you're very welcome to another Yara webinar. We'll be focusing on oilseed rape for the next 30 minutes or so and how we can create a successful establishment of the crop. My name is Eva Ross and I'm once again joined by my colleague Natalie Wood, our Arable agronomist covering UK and Ireland and making a guest appearance with us tonight is Michael Farr, who is an oilseed rape specialist with DS3 and you're very welcome, Michael. This evening, Natalie and Michael will take us through the following topics, uh, seed treatments, drilling depths, seed rates and drilling dates, autumn fertilizer placement, varieties and maintaining crop momentum in the lead up to winter. So Natalie, I'll now hand the reins over to you to kickstart this evening with seed treatments. Natalie. Thanks Eva. Um, so yeah, I'm going to begin at the start of where nutrition can play a part in establishment and that is as a seed treatment. So there's a couple of particularly important nutrients um, at this very early stage of crop growth and that's phosphate and manganese. So phosphate is important for protein synthesis, root and shoot development and energy transfer within the plant. However, its mobility within the soil itself is very poor. Um, having a seed treatment that contains phosphate means that it is in the correct place near the seed so that the newly developing roots can access it quickly and efficiently um, and therefore give it that phosphate that it needs to kickstart the growth. Now manganese is a major contributor to various biological systems including chlorophyll production and oxidation um, and electron transfer in photosynthesis. Uh, manganese has a metabolic role as well in nitrate reducing enzyme activity and activation of enzymes which plays a role in carbohydrate metabolism. Thus photosynthesis efficiency actually decreases with manganese deficiency so manganese really key for that photosynthesis which is critical at that that's early timing. Um, therefore having both within a seed treatment will ensure the seedling has sufficient supply to kickstart the growth and as if by magic, Yara has a seed treatment that contains both of those called glytrel MNP. Um, and yeah, so that has the phosphate and the manganese in there for that crucial early growth. Now, if we look at some trials that we did um, an establishment last autumn, um, this was glytrel MNP on some oil seed. And this showed that the, um, there were more than double the number of plants per meter squared in the treated plots when compared to the untreated. You can see there 25 in the untreated versus 57 in the treated. Um, and you can see there that that's obviously greatly increased the, the number of plants established. And if we look at that in terms of what it actually looked like, um, then you can see there the untreated, um, quite little establishment in terms of the percentage and rather patchy versus the treated there. You can see nice, nice, even rows and good even establishment and that evenness carried on actually um, through the season and I'll, I'll show you a couple of pictures of that later but if we look at this picture here on the left then you can see the treated on the left and the untreated on the right so there was a real difference not only in the number of plants but also the um, biomass of those plants and if we look at this graph in terms of fresh weights then there's big, dif big differences there too so the root fresh weight, which is the blue columns, were four and a half times greater than the untreated, which meant that there was not only a higher root density than the untreated, but the roots were also longer, so enabling the plants to access more water and therefore nutrients. Uh, the shoot fresh weights, which are here in orange, were two and a half times greater in the treated plots. So that means that the crops have been able to put on more biomass, meaning that more photosynthesis, which I said was uh, manganese was important for, and therefore the energy to grow away quickly. And um, that's what's key in the autumn, obviously, for oil seed. We want it to grow as quickly as possible to, to grow away from those potential um, problems. So the total fresh weights, which is combining the root and shoots, were again two and a half times greater than um, where the treated was compared to where the untreated was. So overall, the plants with the seed treatment had more roots and were better able to access those resources and therefore better established than without the seed treatment. And the most striking differences, um, if we move on to the next slide, were the, the visual differences that you can see really a hedge to hedge evenness across the treated area with no bare patches which can often attract pests such as pigeons. 
So you can see that the untreated in the autumn is rather patchy. And as I mentioned, some, some nice bare patches there for pests to come in. And the two pictures on the right are the treated. And you can just see there how even it is across that field in the spring. Um, we are taking that trial to harvest, so it'll be interesting to see the results, but this trial was set up really just to show the establishment, and that's the key factor here, rather than the yield driving the research. So that's the first section done. I'm going to hand over now to Michael, um, who's going to talk about some drilling depth and um, appropriate drilling parameters. Thank you, Natalie. Um, we'll start off talking about drilling depth. Um, we're looking at a range between 0 and 35 mil. That is a big range. And yes, 0 mil. Um, 0 mil comes in when we're broadcasting off the back of the combine header and we're covering it with chop straw. It's quite a cheap method. It's very effective and very consistent, especially in situations where we're looking to conserve moisture. So moving on to the next section of this, obviously when we're starting to drill, we're looking to drill between 35 and 35 mil, ensuring first and foremostly we're drilling it e evenly because we want every seed to germinate and come through at the same time to alleviate some of the pressure. Um, five to 35 mil, firstly we've got to consider what herbicide we're using, if we're using a pre-em, do we need to get below the herbicide um, safety level? And secondly, most importantly, we need to drill so that we hit the moisture. So, so that can be five mil, that can be 35 mil. It's better to go a little bit deeper and find the moisture and get an even germination. Um, seed rates. As ever, we look for a target plant population to achieve optimum yield of 20 to 25 plants with a, a seed rate of somewhere between 35 and 70, depending on moisture, seed bed, drill type, etc., with a maximum of 17 plants per metre length along a row. Looking at that target plant population, some of you will be saying, well, we want to drill more. We want more plants to get away from the problems of cabbage stem flea beetle. We do know from the research, which has now been done by the AHDB, if we have a higher plant population, we then tend to have more larvae when it comes to the spring per plant and per square meter. So keeping the plant population down is still key to managing the problem moving forward. So when we're looking to drill and when we're looking at what's going on and how the problems are going to in, encounter, one of the first things to do is look at what has the pressure been and how much oil seed rape is actually left in my area. We do need a host crop to sustain the population of beetle. And in some areas which have been particularly badly affected, the population the area of rape is non-existent or very small. Therefore, we can only sustain a small, small population of beetle. It's worth considering this when we then move on to what strategy we're going to do in terms of drilling date. So consider that very carefully and consider that in collaboration with what your fellow farmer is going to do in terms of area planted, or if you're a particularly large farmer, how much you're then going to put in to dilute, dilute the problem potentially. Um, drilling date. Um, I'm going to suggest a strategy of drilling windows, which will be three. But once you have your strategy, whatever strategy you go for, it is key to take the best conditions within that drilling window that you select, looking at fertility, of course, which is covered already by Natalie, moisture, weeds, and warmth. So we need to look at have we got the um, moisture, have we got the warmth, and are we at the right stage in terms of controlling our weeds? So I then break the drilling windows down into three. 
an early window, head start, try and get the plant up and growing before the emergence, um, the migration of cabbage stem flea beetle. A middle window, we're going for optimum conditions as we previously would have done in the past, looking to grow and outrun the beetle. Or then we're looking at a later drilling window, somewhere between the 10th and the 25th of September, and waiting until we've had the last migration and then trying to get past it. Now I'm conscious we're not all in the same part of the UK or Ireland. So these dates, if you're further north, they'll be shrunk. If you're further south, they'll be expanded. So, but as a rule of thumb, somewhere in the middle of the country, these are the windows I'll be looking at. And it's, we've got to consider, firstly, the establishment risk, the importance of conditions, the importance of vigour and daylight, daylight hours all become more as we go later. And earlier, soil temperatures are higher, the importance of disease resistance is more, larvae numbers will be greater from early drill crops, and the importance of spring vigour to grow away from the larvae then increases even more. And those are the factors we have to consider when we're looking at the window. So a strategy of which window, then taking the best condition within that window to get around the problem. Also to consider when we're looking at establishment, these things can help and need to be carefully looked at. Long stubble, there's good work done with long stubble in terms of decreasing the problems. Companion cropping, there seems to be good evidence that some of the buckwheat and mustard are contributing. But also bag up fenugreek, it's also been one of the things that's come out lately. Um, Lumaposa seed treatment is out there and does have some degree of efficacy. Um, we then need to ensure seed soil contact and also we need to think about slugs. We might be in a situation this August, as we are in many Augusts, we're actually in a very wet condition, but we need to think about managing slugs and also maybe even drying out the seed bed, bed a little bit, rather than conserving moisture, which is a situation we've had for the last two years. Um, but now I will hand you back to Natalie. Thanks, Michael. Um, so some interesting points there, thank you. Um, I'm now going to cover placement of fertilizer for oilseed and how that can help um, as well as mention a few things to consider when choosing a grain. So we know that oilseed is allowed 30 kilos of nitrogen per hectare in the autumn um, if you're an NVZ, however this can be reduced if you're placing the fertilizer. Now Yara has carried out a lot of work on placement of fertilizer for oilseed in order to get the crop up and away and help alleviate some of the hurdles the young oilseed plant can face. Um, and these are a couple of trials from a couple of years ago, um, looking at three different varieties. Um, looking at three different varieties where there was placed fertilizer versus broadcast, which was the standard. So you can see that at both sites, there's considerably more biomass on the plots that have the fertilizer placed at drilling. Um, and this was also reflected in the plant counts with more plants per metre squared where the fertiliser was placed. Um, and just in case that writing is too small, the best practice placed are the blue bits on the graph and the orange bits are the standard practice. So you can see there's some really um, good increases there in fresh matter in terms of tonnes per hectare. So does it make any difference? It might sound obvious, but placing the fertiliser under the seed means that as the roots develop, they have quick and easy access to that fertilizer. And phosphate in particular, as I mentioned earlier, doesn't move very far. And by that, I mean less than one millimeter in the soil. So by placing it, it means the roots don't have to go looking for it um, and they can pick it up as they grow down through it. This um, again is just looking at placing fertilizer. Um, and less fertilizer is obviously being wasted by being spread between the rows. So phosphate into row will soon become locked up either by iron or aluminium ions or precipitated out with calcium ions and therefore it becomes plant unavailable. So placing the fertilizer is therefore a more efficient way of utilizing 
the nutrition and increasing your overall nutrient use efficiency as a whole. Um, this graph shows some trials comparing responses to seedbed fertilizer, either being broadcast or placed. And you can see that in three out of four rates, the placed treatments out yielded the broadcast ones. <clears throat> and as I mentioned, you can drop the rate of the fertilizer used too when you're placing it from that maximum 30 kilos down to 20 or 25 kilos per hectare. If we think of which grade to choose, then obviously that's going to depend on your soil and your specific farm history to make your decision. But straight nitrogen isn't always the best choice. Um, as we know, phosphate is required for quick roots and shoot development. So that should be factored in. Um, potassium is important for water regulation, which can help if there's a dry autumn. But it also um, there's work to show that it acts as an antifreeze in the winter too by lowering the cell sap's freezing point um, and preventing frost damage. If we look at this graph here then, um, using an MPK is also going to improve your nitrogen use efficiency as well as the nutrient use efficiency as a whole. And you can see on this graph over nine different sites, the, the blue column had an NS product, whereas the orange columns had an MPKS product. Um, the nitrogen uptake was greatly improved on most of those sites. Well, actually, all the sites it improved um, with an average of 14 kilos of N per hectare there across all the nine sites. But you can actually see the difference on one of them, in particular at site two, was actually as high as 39 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. So just goes to show how the nitrogen use efficiency has in, been improved by the addition of the P and K and S across all those sites. So meaning the more more the crop was able to create more biomass early on during the critical establishment phase before winter. So over winter survival is another improvement that we see by use of an MPKS over an NS product. Um, if we look at this table here, then we've got 90 to 100% survival rate versus 36 to 40% on this particular trial. Um, an MPKS product such as Active Rest is a good option on the solid side. Um, you can see there that's 16, 15, 15 plus six and a half SO3. Or if you're on the liquid side of things, then something like 18, 27, naught plus boron is a, a popular choice. There. Uh, so they're just a couple of options. Obviously, there's lots of different ones out there, but um, yeah, those ones are a couple of good ones. So I'm going to hand back over now to Michael who's going to cover which traits to look for I think um, and some more bits on on seeds so over to you Michael. Thanks very much Natalie very enlightening. Um, so we look at the varieties now and I thought we'd look at what we were after in terms of variety and combating the problems that we're now encountering with the cabbage stem flea beetle and with the dry conditions that we've been having. And what we need is pre-Christmas, we need, we need momentum to grow away from adult cabbage stem flea beetle. We need good resistance to foam and leaf spot. This is increasingly important when we're looking to keep leaf area moving forward. Um, we need TYV resistance, TYV is endemic across the UK. The work we've done indicates 90% of the crops last year were infected. And TUIV does stunt the growth of the plant. We see this in most of the TUIV cultivars available, and it makes a big difference in grow away. So then we move post Christmas, again, we need the momentum to move away from the larvae that are potentially in the crop, depending on the situation. Again, the TUIV resistance is very important at that point. And then we have the light leaf spot resistance also kicking in. I'd also flag up with the foam and leaf spot. If we don't have that genetically, that's one of the things which the chemistry will help with quite easily. OK, so now we start comparing some material in the field. This is on a sandy site in Wiltshire, and this was taken last year in heavy grazing conditions after establishment and you'll see the crop the plot on the right is just a standard hybrid variety sort of about three years old now 
quite a vigorous variety. And then you look at the plot on the left, which is a latest generation variety called Voltage with TUIB resistance in it. And we start to see the difference in terms of the vigor that the TUIB varieties bring to the party. Part of that's the genetics that we brought on apart from the resistance, but it's definitely what we're seeing brought with the resistance. And again, we see this brought even more clearly into, the, into focus here. On the left is a competitor hybrid variety, and on the right is our variety Darling, which again features a TUYV trait. And again, we're seeing this brought in, into the party. And also, if you look into the background, you'll also see a row of plots. And again, there's one less vigorous one, and that's the one without the TUIV. And it's a very consistent trait and is bringing more biomass through and is improving our up uptake. So we move on and on the left hand side, again, you will see a TUIB variety against an open pollinated variety on the right. And you'll see as a general picture, most of the trial in front of you is hybrid material apart from the one plot, which is looking poorly established. So with the hybrids bring more vigor, more rooting, more nutrient uptake, and then the TUYB just pushes this to another level. Okay, so when we go through and we look at this DSV portfolio for the coming year, we start to see Darling, Dazzler, Duplo, Duke, Voltage and Temptation all carrying the TUYB trait, along with certain others carrying the RM7 pod chatter. Um, we also have two clear field varieties of both of which show good vigour in the autumn as well, Phoenix and Simplex. Moving through into summary of the key points I'd like, like, to, like you to take away with it. Look at what you're doing with the drilling depth, find the moisture, ensure seed soil contact, target 25 to the, 20 to 25 plants per square meter. Don't be tempted to increase your seed rate too much. Assess the pressure in your farm and area, engage your approach and select your drilling window accordingly. Consider long stubbles, but Numaposa as all factors that can contribute and help with success. And my final point would be drill a TUIV resistant variety such as Darling Dazzler Duke, Voltage or Temptation. And the final, final thing, just a little plug, on our triple layer varieties, also others fe featuring um, alternative yellows virus resistance, we are giving you 20% extra free seed to help, taking this bag size from 1.5 million to 1.8. This is to ensure our farmers succeed and, in, and those who wish to decrease the cost of establishment. Success, success, success. I will now hand you back to Natalie. Thanks, Michael. Um, it was interesting that you mentioned momentum because I'm just going to briefly um, cover how micronutrients can keep that crop going and keep that momentum going into the winter. Um, so we know that in conducive conditions, oilseed rape can put a lot of growth on before the winter period. Therefore, there is that potential for it to begin to run out of steam due to the availability of micronutrients in the soil in that autumn time. Um, and this can lead to deficiencies potentially in the autumn if there has been a lot of growth or probably early spring when it possibly is too wet to get on with the sprayer and, and rectify it. So um, that can be an issue. If we think once you see the deficiency then it's too late really as you you're already losing that potential yield if the symptoms are present um, so just bear that in mind the most accurate way to see what's in the crop obviously in the autumn would be to carry out a tissue test however obviously there's a lot of jobs going on at that that time with cereals probably being drilled and other things going on though so there is a simple solution 
and that is one of our crop specifics. So Yara manufactures some crop specific folium micronutrient mixtures which contain all the key nutrients for that particular crop. And the one for oilseed rape is Breast Cell Pro and it contains magnesium, molybdenum, calcium, boron and a small amount of nitrogen. And this means it can be applied as a preventative measure to ensure that those common deficiencies which are common for oilseed rape don't catch you out. Um, and then you can follow it up again with another application in the spring, potentially after some tissue testing if you want to, or just um, as a fail safe on its own. If we look at some trials, then we can see here, these are the, the trials we've done over the past five years on Breast Job Pro. And you can see there it's given a yield response of uh, a third of a ton there from an application in the autumn and again in the spring. So we've got lots of data to, to show that it works and you can generally see that 0.3 of a ton every single year. Um, so yeah, good, good investment on that. And as I've said there, in the autumn at the two to four leaf stage and then again in the spring at onset of stem extension. So in terms of a, a summary for, for nutrition, start at the beginning with the seed treatment, as I mentioned, phosphate um, and manganese particularly important um, at that early growth stage. Then as soon as possible, either at drilling or after drilling, um, putting some fertilizer. Now I mentioned, we've only mentioned placement, of course you can broadcast it, you're still going to get um, a, res a response there, but placement is more efficient um, and potentially you're going to get that yield benefit from placement but of course if you can't do that then broadcast is also fine and then finally it's about maintaining that crop momentum in the lead up to winter as I mentioned so crop specific mixture makes life easy just just put that on and it covers all the key deficiencies and you're stopping them appearing before it's too late um, and making sure it's maintaining that biomass through into the winter and keeping that momentum going. So I hope you found that useful um, and thanks to Michael. I'm going to hand over now to Eva. Super, thanks Nat. And that is all for this evening. Many thanks uh, to Michael for joining us this evening and uh, please God we'll have Michael back with us um, soon again. And uh, Natalie, thanks to you too uh, for joining us again. And uh, yeah, wish everyone uh, a good rest of the evening there.